Brookhaven is a new farming life sim game that many of you have been asking me about. With some good and some bad, I have mixed feelings about this one, so I'm here to let you know what I think about it. Hello you gorgeous human being of the world, it's Miss Bubbles, and today I'm here to help you decide if Brookhaven is worth your bubbly cash, so without further ado, let's get started. A wizard traps you in a storybook where you find yourself in a magical town called Brookhaven. You choose your name, gender, and how you look by choosing from different eyes, skin color, hair, and clothing options. You quickly learn that the storybook you're in had its previous hero who's now dead and you're kind of a replacement for them. I'll let you know right away that this game deals with a little bit of dark subjects such as death and demons so if you don't like this kind of thing in your own farming games I think it's gonna be a skip for you from the start. Anyways back to Brookhaven. In this town there is a lot of magic happening. A demon that supposedly decides the fate of the characters there and lots of creatures wandering around some friendly and some not so much. So you're basically going with the flow and trying to fulfill your role as the hero to escape whatever this is. During your journey, you're going to be meeting with a lot of characters, each with their own unique personalities, likes, dislikes, stories, and more. These characters are very important because your story progresses either by fulfilling their quests that reach you through the mailbox outside your doorstep, or maybe by them arriving at your house randomly, or some of them might have a yellow exclamation point above their head indicating that they want something from you. As you complete their quest, which is usually either getting them something specific or maybe meeting up with them like attending a dinner together, you'll learn more about the secrets here. And these secrets will revolve around Brookhaven's history, the old hero, the residents there, the magic, and so much more. And the fun thing is that not only do you have humans, which are like, you know, normal human beings to interact with, but you also have talking animals like a king frog, but you also discover the existence of vampires and other not-so-human factions. I won't go too much into detail around the occults, I think that's how you say it in this game. I want to leave that sense of discovery for you, but there are plenty of creatures for you to discover. All in all, the story did engage me and I was asking myself a lot of questions like, why am I here? What am I doing here? What's the point of all of this? You know, kind of like in real life, but this time it's in a game. Let's talk about the most important thing in here, which is the gameplay loop and it revolves you squishing the like and subscribe buttons if you're enjoying this video so far. If you want to see me again, I'd love to see you again and maybe we can reach 60 likes for this video let's do it all jokes aside, one of the most important things in the farming slash life sim genre is the gameplay loop. When you reach Brookhaven, you're given the farming house and the land that belonged to the old hero, you know, the one that died. Now you have their place. Along with that, you get some farming tools and you start with a little bit of money that you can invest in buying crops. One of the first quests is actually to help you get into farming because they ask you for five hops. So you visit the grocery store to buy a wide range of crops and they all grow based on the season and a certain number of days. You also get yourself plenty of livestock like pigs and cows to take care of, thus having access to resources to cook different recipes. The more you increase your farming skill, the more items you'll unlock to help you out such as a scarecrow or a sprinkler along with a bunch more. This can be accessed through your inventory where you have a tab for different let's say blueprints to create, each requiring a certain amount of resources ranging from copper bars, wood, stone, and a lot more. Other than farming, the main essence in this game is all about magic and spells. You have different abilities to use such as fireballs or teleportation which you can unlock and the more you use magic and the more quests you complete the more skills you'll get which will come in handy later on. For example in the beginning you don't have the teleportation skill that I just mentioned however as you complete a certain quest you'll unlock it and then you will need this teleportation skill to complete another quest and this is how the entire game goes you're gonna be unlocking one thing to deliver it to another quest and then unlocking something else and doing the whole thing all over again and it's pretty much what it is with all farming sims and this is what usually keeps us hooked it's that loop of doing things over again and always getting rewarded for it you also have your cauldron where you can make use of alchemy to create health and stamina potions for example and i really like this aspect of the game in addition to that, you have the mines, which are treated as a dungeon with plenty of floors to uncover. On each floor, you have monsters to defeat, and that's how your magic and fighting skills can level up. The deeper you go in the mine, the rarer the items you'll find will be, but also the more difficult the monsters are going to be for you to take down. And the thing is that this mine is kind of like a puzzle, so you need to figure out your way down, and you have to solve riddles as well. To be honest, as soon as I hit the 11th floor, I started to dislike mining in this game. Everything was super dark, and I had to make 
take a lot and I'm seeing a lot of torches to light my way which I thought was making things difficult just for the sake of it I'm telling you it was super difficult to find my way around I know some of y'all like this I don't like this at all so I really didn't like mining in this one maybe at least leaving the damn lights on and letting me focus on the puzzles would have been enough and don't forget we're adding in here monsters it was just so much going on another thing that annoyed me in the mines is that monsters can hit you but you have no idea that this was happening until you find yourself dead and you're in your house this is basically because the enemies don't really have a legitimate way of showing you that they're hitting you so there's no real animation behind it so i think just any small animation that can be added in into the game can really help us know if we're getting hit so rather than me staring at the hp bar and mashing my mouse all the time i think it would be beneficial to kind of know that i am being attacked in the first place and tying to the system you have to buy new gear recipes and upgrade your tools which helps you become better at what you do be it farming or even fighting and this would not be a life sim slash farming game or farming game slash life sim game if we don't have the whole aspect of marriage relationships and friendships as i mentioned earlier characters have unique personalities you can talk to them daily and i like that they have a lot of dialogue options and you can sometimes choose how you'll answer them back but i'm not sure how important your decision is and you can get quests from them on the notice board in the town and i believe that puts you at a better relationship or friendship with them once you complete their request you also have this special mirror on your wall in your room where you can basically spy on these characters and this is very important if you really want to work on a friendship because once you spy on them the mirror will tell you what this person likes so by donating to this mirror one moonstone which is very easy to find in the mines you can know for sure what the character likes and by giving them that you will get more hearts with them some of the characters are romanceable so you can marry them and have a kid together which is part of the story but i can't talk about it because it will hit story spoilers you also have other skills such as fishing which i kind of found very bland because basically you throw the line in you wait for the perfect moment to click on your mouse when the yellow square is in the middle and sometimes you might unlock a good the chest. I think any other mini game would have been better, especially with the way this one looked. It felt very cheap, as you can see on the screen. Another skill is forging, where you pick up different things from the ground, and there's the use of worms to find different items, such as paintings and fossils, to donate to the local museum. Your house is also customizable. You can choose which decor and furniture items to put in there, so you can fit the style to your own personality, which I really like. And you can also adopt a pet, which is also something that I really love in games. I got mine and I called him Teddy just like my own dog in real life. Now Brookhaven is pretty okay to look at. It has the pixel art style that we find in Stardew Valley and you know I love this art style. However the amount of similarities that this game has with Stardew Valley just I think it's way too much. The characters have this avatar which again looks very similar to Stardew Valley. You also have your magic stamina and HP points bar on the far right to manage along with a cute owl clock that lets you know the time, season, and date you're in. There were plenty of creatures and occults to meet and they all have their own look to them to set them apart which are really welcomed. The town has a beach and a forest area which is always dark so it sets its own tone. Plus there are other worlds to visit with their own riddles to solve but we won't get into that because again this is territory. This is spoiler territory, not not just territory. You even have a bridge on the beach that you can build to cross to the other side of the beach and Stardew Valley, exactly like Stardew Valley. One thing that I really like though is that characters do different things during the day. So you'll find some of them playing around, reading, using cauldron, chatting with each other, painting and more and I really felt that this was a lived-in world. I also like that the characters interact with the season and weather system. If it's raining outside they will be holding their umbrella and wearing a raincoat and they will comment on the fact that it is raining today. This was great for immersion and for not feeling like the NPCs are disconnected from Brookhaven. However, let's talk about the controls and man oh man do they need a lot of work and fixing i know there's a lot of patches that have fixed them but they are still struggling to say the least i cannot tell you how many times i tried to click on something in my chest or my inventory and it will pick up something else eventually after lots of hours it will get very frustrating and not only that when you're moving around the world your character will keep getting stuck when anything is nearby and you have to keep figuring out how to get yourself out of the situation that you're stuck in and again this was very very frustrating to me 
In the sound department, there is no voice acting here first and foremost, and that is completely okay with me. The dialogue was plenty and it kept me engaged and that was enough for me. As far as sound effects go though, they are inconsistent and not used that much, which can be immersion breaking. For example, you can't hear your character's footstep and when I chop, let's say, a tree, sometimes I'll hear it, sometimes I won't. As for the music, let's say for the first hour, I was like, wow, this is relaxing, this is nice, but as more hours went by, the music volume went down. It was the same song on repeat in the dungeons and another one in the outside world and it was getting ridiculously repetitive. I wish at least we had like one for the morning and one for the nighttime, but I think we need more music choices in this game. And regardless if it is changing from season to season or whatever you want to go and say in the comment section, it was repetitive, I didn't like it, I turned it down, but if you like that music, excellent, good for you. I'm already like ready for the salt that I'm gonna get in this video because <sighs> let's just keep going. Moving on to the performance side of things, my PC was not sounding like a jet, which I love. Everything was fine, no bugs, no stuttering, no frame rate drops, which I always welcome. So as you can see, this game has some good, but it also has some bad. So let's decide if it's gonna be the one for you. As always, we're gonna go by this game is for you if, not for you if, and then my personal verdict. Now this game is for you if you're looking for a new indie developer in the farming genre that you want to support. I think you're gonna find something here, but don't expect it to be groundbreaking. It's also for you if you love discovering different occults like vampires and mermaids. It's for you if you love puzzles and riddles to solve. And it's for you, as I said, if you want to support this developer's first project. And if you have $15 to spare and just want to jump in and try it for yourself, then why not? However, this game is not for you if you get easily frustrated with puzzles, bad controls, and at times lack of sense of direction since the game can be very slow at the start with its story pacing. It's also not for you if you're having big expectations thinking this is the next Stardew Valley of this decade like no, it's not. And it's not for you if you're new to this genre and hoping that this will be your first entry. As for my own personal verdict, I went into this game super hyped up for it. I think my expectations were a little bit too high. Maybe I should have balance them a little bit, but honestly, from the beginning of my playthrough, I drew plenty of similarities to Stardew Valley, and not that this is a bad thing, plus, you know, farming games have a lot of gameplay mechanics that are common, so it wasn't- that wasn't really the problem. The problem to me was that this game felt like a chore to play. I felt like besides the magic system, which isn't groundbreaking at all, it was like playing a Stardew Valley mod, to be honest. I really wanted to like this game, I tried to push more hours thinking maybe the more I play I will find this thing that it will finally click with me and everything will be okay but it just didn't work that way for me. The developer is very sweet and this is by no means a way of judging them or their development skills. There has been a lot of updates to help fix things so it shows that they are really trying here but the controls, the music, the lack of direction sometimes in the story and just everything that I said that I didn't really like, it pulled me away away from the experience and it did not really immerse me and make me feel attached to the game which is something that I really look forward to in the farming life sim genre where I love getting connected to everybody and the world and feeling like a true part of it. I think this is Little Amethyst's first game so I am sure next projects will be better, I think they have potential, however as Brookhaven stands right now it's very difficult for me to recommend it. But hey, this is simply my opinion based on my own experience with this game and my past experiences with other ones so let me know what you think down in the comment section, I would love to talk to you about it. Thanks to my bubbly Patreons for the constant support and special shout out to Justin and Faye for going the extra mile without you guys these videos would not be possible. As always, stay bubbly, stay positive, and I will see your gorgeous self in the next one. Bye!